All right, guys, we are uh, hanging out with, um, here, let's see, I want to go on this side of here. Hanging out with Gracie and Lena today. Uh, snowy, super snowy day. It's, uh, Hey Teresa, it's um, a little chilly, but not bad since it snowed. It uh, it isn't crusty or nothing on the uh, top side of it, and it's nice. It's relatively quiet. I had somebody who said, "I love it when it snows because you get that that quiet that sort of happens, and uh, you know where the snow sort of dulls the dulls the." Um, the sound waves, I guess you could say. So everything's sort of less of an air. I don't know. It's, it's just really nice. I'm here with these two. Uh, we put them together. When did we put them? Yesterday. Uh, because um, Peggy had gone out for a trail ride and Lena was at the back. So she started to get worried and I thought, well, We'll bring her up here and she can come hang out with um uh, uh with gracie who uh was missing her uh paddock mate and so yeah, put them together so she just stayed up here but they seem to be doing okay together relatively um anyways i've uh i've got some thoughts and ideas that again when i do these live streams i do them super off the cuff like just hey i've got some thoughts i'm just gonna kind of spill them out there and you know if you want to listen cool uh, but i was working with um with a horse this morning and the the horse was amazing i mean uh i got a whole pile of thoughts they're all still kind of rolling around in my head but <clears throat> Um, the, the idea, and I had a drive home, snowy, so everybody's driving slower and stuff. And uh, the, the, the roads, the roads are pretty good, but just, you know, you drive safe. So I was thinking all the way back, what, what's going on here? What, what techniques does this horse need? What, what works well? What doesn't work well? Why? Because um, the particular horse that I was working with, supposedly it had uh, a series of people that had been working with it. And when I showed up, I, uh, I, I saw what the owner was doing. I saw uh, the horse's behaviors in regards to feeling stress or worry. And um, I noticed something just right away. I thought, oh, there, that, get that deal with that and so we had a chat about it we chit chatted oh, well, what's what's happened you know how come that's never been dealt with and and of course the idea is everybody has a different way I mean not everybody has a different way but there are a lot of different ways to work with horses a lot of different ways to train them and I just can't get this quite right something's not framed up anyways um and where I come in and I approach it from uh, the way that I did, which I'll explain in a second, uh, other people didn't. They didn't. They didn't see it the same way that I did. <clears throat> uh, or if they did, uh, they they found something that, uh, that was a higher priority. So my thoughts around horse training are very usually a lot of quiet work. You know, a lot of uh, get get really comfortable for the horse where they don't feel like they have to be worried or running around or afraid kind of thing. And, you know, you can get them to where they get worried, um, get them to where they 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 can be concerned. And no doubt about it, this horse that I work with, I've got them pretty worried, but 
that's not the goal. The goal is never to get them there. The goal is to get them there, bring them back as fast as you can. And, um, so let's cover this just a little bit, a little bit closer in detail as to what it is. Um, one of the things that I notice a lot, and a lot of people either uh, miss it, or ignore it, or tolerate it, uh, is when horses are are one-sided. So, um, I don't know. These two are pretty good, but if you're if you're playing around with a horse, if you're messing around with a horse, if you're doing something, it doesn't matter what it is. You could be um, you could be riding. Uh, you could be on the ground shaking something. You could be, uh, uh, you know, with a flag or a tarp or doing something that's kind of worrisome or scary or whatever. Um, a lot of times, because horses have eyes on either side of their head, they'll they'll likely give you their left eye a little more than maybe their right eye. And so the horse that we worked with today was a lot like that. It was really, to me, it was very odd. It was just night and day. I was like, whoa, wait, hang on. Let's hang on there. Let's stop there. Because um, I found uh, a lot of times, and I've heard this too. I've learned it, uh, but I don't think it's stuck at the time, but I learned it uh, a while back. That when horses are one-sided, they have a very hard time being ridden. <clears throat> because you're on both sides of them so uh you know a horse that's one-sided when you go to get on you you're, you're on one side and you go to swing your leg over and now you're on both sides um andrew mclean did um a talk a while back <clears throat> that i saw and i really liked it if i can find it i will try to link it but i don't know it's hard to find these things because i watch so many things Anyways, his, his words of advice around this area were that horses can handle stipulate, stimulation from maybe one or two spots. So, I wonder if I can go get Gracie. Hang on. Can I borrow you? Hi. I just need your attention. You don't leave. Good. I need a halter. Okay, can you move forward? A little bit forward. No, no, no. Not that. Forward. I don't want this side of you. Man. This side is not the good side. Can you go this way? Little more, little more, but don't leave. Little more. Ah, no, 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 no. I wonder if it's easier to just bring the camera. Okay. So, uh, Andrew McLean did this great talk, and he said horses can handle, say, one spot, one touch, and maybe two touches maybe three here's four oh see so that was to me that's a great example of his talk he says oh hello <laughs> so horses can handle one two sometimes three but when you add in four or even five isn't she adorable i mean you gotta admit you're adorable. Okay, well, do you want to come say hello? Say hello to him. Say hello. Uh, but five, you know, that that's a lot. It's a it's a lot for them to handle, and and you'll get to where you'll be oversensitizing their body, and they 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 have to concentrate on all these places that you're touching. Um, so, a lot of horses that you go to get on and you're sitting there and they've got to manage you on their left side, this is my left, 
on their right side and then you might touch them on their butt you might touch them on their neck you know and you've got all this going on there's four spots there um, and for for his talk was so interesting about it. I can't I'd be paraphrasing and probably ruining the whole thing if I tried to even explain how he put it um, but my concept is the same for that so I take that and by making sure that they're good on both sides of their body is a start of that so come on this side right really get in here and then bring a leg up that's a high head that's not a happy horse it's an uncomfortable horse aren't you so get off of me come here come here I'm here. Good grief. You think you'd have a hard life or something? You don't. You don't have a hard life. Right? So the 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 problem that uh, we're having this morning was more of the one-sided thing, but that can that uh, there is a direct connection to being able to touch them and be around them on both sides and many spots to being one-sided because they might tolerate you rather well on that one side you might do one two three four maybe five spots on one side but the other side might only get one or two spots maybe three and so you can sort of gauge that but there is a in my opinion there's a direct connection between the one-sided horse and the horse that can't handle more than two or three um connection points i don't even know if they're called i call i might call him that i think he's got a better word anyways if you have time look up andrew mclean the guy has done so much, put so much time and research into horses. He's working on elephants. That'd be fun. That'd be cool. Um, same idea. So, oh, look at what happened here. Who did this to you? Is Lena chewing on your mane? Okay, all right. That's there. A little better. Uh, tangles in her hair. Can't be helped, you know. You get into these things, and then you're like, "Well, I guess I'll just get this one out and then that one," and um, which bleeds into the idea of what I've titled this video about concepts and ideas of horse training. And when I look at the when I looked at the horse, I thought, man, why hasn't anybody dealt with this one-sided part? Why hasn't anybody dealt with making sure that the horse is good in both eyes? Um, maybe they did. I don't know. I'm just I'm seeing that the horse wasn't, so I don't know. But um, but that concept, that idea, that they should be come here. Yeah, she's not good with this, so you know. She's better on the other side. I said, come here. There. Relax. Calm down. Yeah, we're good buddies. Come here. Come here. That's a worried face. I don't know if you can tell. That's a worried. That's, a, that's not. That's a. Oh, there's a quiet eye. There's a sleepy eye. Oh, there's a worried eye. A little sleepy. Well, anyways. So, I would always try to... And another conversation that came up was whether or not, um, you know, where, where do you get your education or where do you get your 
you're training when you're you're just trying to figure out a horse do you pay attention to one person lots of people and the consensus has always been pay attention to a lot of people pick up the things that you want to kind of pick up let go of the stuff you don't want to um but the i the concept that everybody's got a different sort of approach or idea and that that's okay um as we continue to sort of grow and refine along the way well here comes lena scratches hi lena did you come to say hello I can help you with. <laughs> um, and so I really want to kind of, you know, encourage people to always keep keep looking around, and, uh, and even in the comments here, a lot of people make suggestions and participate. And you know, how about this or how about that or did you think of this or or what happens with that? And those things are great. I always want I want I really want people to keep thinking along those lines that. Ah, no, 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 don't, don't, stay, no, 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 ah, ah, yeah, no, no, look, you can see her whisker, I don't even know if you guys can see, she's literally right here. What do you think, Lena? Can you see yourself? Can horses see themselves in a camera, do you think? Like in a screen? A mirror? Some dogs can. I don't know if horses can. Oh. Don't touch. Don't touch. Okay. There's your horsey eye. Oh, you got some hay over there. No. Mm-hmm. Don't touch the tripod. Anyhow, so concepts and ideas like how you do things can be very fluid, I think. You know, there's some things that are really effective and work for many horses, which is another part of the conversation that came up. Some horses respond well to some things, some horses don't. You know, it's gonna be kind of <laughs> Okay, what does Lena want? Pop quiz. Anybody? Actually, I haven't been paying any attention to comments, so if anybody's commenting, I'm really sorry. Um, she wants scratches. Butt scratches. Uh, anyway, so the, the, the concepts can be rather fluid. And... Uh, um, and I'm cool with it. I mean, some things obviously are uh, are are better. You know, they work better. They're more effective. But there's one thing that I don't think that I would ever stray from. No matter what technique, whatever. Oh goodness. Whatever. Um, You can't see it, but her nose is cut. What? Put your tail down. Down. Go down. Um, one thing that I would never stray from in regards to training or working with horses or being around horses, no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm working with flags, tarps, riding, trail riding, and work. Uh, uh, motorized things, cars, gators, trucks, bicycles, even umbrellas, all of these things, no matter how much, you know, if you've got a, um, <laughs> she says, don't lean on me, just scratch, scratch me. Hey, you're in trouble now. I'm going to have to turn the camera around and 
Get you a lesson. Where are we scratching now? Okay, got it. Look. Um, the thing that that I feel that should never change. And I'm not against stressing a horse out. I'm not against sort of getting them hyped up, worried about something. But because usually it's going to lead to something that I've I'm gonna do this too. Um, they usually I can bring them through, uh, so I don't I don't worry too much if I gotta get them through the scary stuff, because it only just makes them stronger. And there's another connection I'll talk about in a second, but that I don't want to get run over or stepped on. Um, but the um, the idea that no matter what you're doing, no matter which technique you're using, that when you get what you want, you let them know that you got that and you're very happy and thankful about it. Like, it's hard to explain without really kind of showing it directly. And Um, you know, if you're going to get them worried, if you're going to get them freaked out and, and kind of scared and you're shaking around and you've got a rope or you've got something, if they do what you want them to do, if they get through that stress, if they, if they move their feet, because most of the time we're just trying to get them to do something or move their feet around or something. If they... Beep, beep, beep. Oh, she stopped. Um, most of the time when they when they get that done uh, it's our job as sort of the educator I mean you could say trainer or whatever horseman horsewoman but we're trying to give them some beep, beep. of course YouTube crashed every single time YouTube crashes um Uh, as I was saying, you know, everybody who's working with a horse, you are, a, no matter what, you're going to be a horse trainer or an educator, a teacher. But because they work a lot based off of fear, um, some treats kind of thing, like that can be a draw. Um, but a lot of times they live their life in fear and we, we sort of worry them and get them past it. Because you're, it's very, very, no matter what you're doing, very important, I believe. That we reassure them and we tell them that they're being really good so uh, i'm gonna stress her out a little bit just by having her come be with me come here uh, you know i'll bring her nose in and i'll wrestle her a little bit because i know she can tolerate it right uh, but when she's really good when she really kind of gets soft, which she isn't yet, so I have to hang on a second. Now I've really put myself into it. Come here. But we reward them with the, that feeling that they did a good job. They've done, they've done well. They're in a safe place. Um, you know, they, it's not a place to be afraid. It's not a place to, to be afraid and stay afraid. So of all the concepts out there, you know, whether you do uh clicker training treat training uh whether you do uh, pressure and release uh whether you ride english whether you ride western all the cultures that are involved with the horse education training world uh you know there's one thing that i believe that i would never want to change or teach anything different is that when you get what you want to get you have to come back to them and say thank you good job you're okay Everything's fine. Just come hang out with me. And so you create a draw. Because I had a really good question that links into the seat. A lot of thoughts. I had a question that came in about a, a horse. Oh, God, there's hair everywhere. Um, and it was about um, a horse that kicks. And I said, well, you've got to create more draw. And uh, she said she didn't know how to create the draw. And... Um, a lot of times people will go into a round pen, they'll create drive, they'll release, which will create draw in a way. Um, 
But true draw doesn't come from just drive. True draw comes from feel, I believe. True draw comes from the horse feeling like being with you is a really good place to be. A very comfortable, safe place. If you watch Luke when he's with me, the guy usually falls asleep when we're chitty chatting, you know. Um, and so to me, that that is true draw. That is what draw really is, where when they're with me, they're with me and quiet and calm. Um, but that doesn't come from drive, 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 fear, fear, fear. You can use that stuff in training and those concepts and ideas of how to train can be, you know, relevant. They can work. But in the end, as always, I believe, and this is just something I just wanted to put out there, I think, in the end. You have to be able to draw them back in through a feeling of comfort and safety and uh, um, and quiet. Because that's all they're looking for. They're not Horses aren't loud creatures. Look at these guys. They're so... Something's going on over there. What is it? I don't know. Um, so, you know, uh, different, as they say, different strokes for different folks. You can have different ideas of how you want to do your horses. Like I said, there's there's the two, the two you know, polar opposites of, uh, of pressure and release and, and, and positive reinforcement. You know, pressure and release is negative reinforcement. And then there's positive reinforcement that doesn't use any negativity to get uh, the training across. <coughs> Both concepts have shown great success. But I think that if you're using, if you've got to use fear, if you've got to use worry or concern, then I think that you have to find a way to be the, the comfort to be the positive, to be the release and safe place to be. I hope that makes sense, you know? Concepts and ideas, everybody can sort of train as they want to. But see, there's gotta be this draw. Hi, have you come over because I'm a safe place to be? He says, the lead is gonna come over and beep, beep, beep back into you. you know. Ah, I remember what I also want to say. Um, when, uh, uh, for the horses that get really, really worried and scared, this was a, an interesting sort of thing that just sort of clicked at the time. Um, that I usually try to teach in the moment because that's when it's most obvious. Hi, Gracie. Why can't you guys both just be here? She's out. Here comes Tub Tub. Anyways, uh, the uh, when you, when you're when you're working with a horse is a pressure release, so you're using some form of fear or worry or concern or you know where they feel like their safety is compromised. Um, a lot of the times, if you do have some draw. There will be points, bits and pieces, and they'll go, they'll get stronger if you reinforce this. Where they'll look to you and say, is everything okay? You know, can... <laughs> what could you do? She's here. You want to say hi to everybody? Like Lena? I'm not finishing a thought, you guys. I'm not finishing a thought. Um, don't touch. No, no, no. Uh, and, uh, the, the idea is that they'll, they'll sort of check in. They'll sort of, they'll sort of look and say, Hey, uh, uh, no, no, no. Ooh. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Don't knock it over. Don't rub on it. Stop. 
Can you not just be here and not be mischievous? Back up a little bit. Back up. Or something. Oh, Lena's coming in. Great. Here comes the boss. What are you guys doing? I can't. Sorry, I can't concentrate. She's on. I'm going to come over here just a little. Nope, doesn't work. Here she comes. Okay, so. All right, look. Here's the idea. No. They'll they'll check in with you. They'll look in and they'll say, "Hey, is it cool? Can I can I come in and and can you just rub me quietly? Just let me know I'm okay." Um, and it'll be a feeling thing. You might kind of sort of feel, which sounds a little bit hokey. And I'm not trying to sound hokey right now. I'm really just trying to sound like uh, something that makes sense. Makes a lot of sense to me. Stop it. You're. Don't make me go get the stick. Um. Okay, I'm in between these two. I hope it works out well. Um, and they'll check in and they'll come in. They'll come in. Look, you know, you freak them out. You got them worried. You got them moving around and stuff. You ask them to do some stuff, and they're doing it. And they check in and say, "I'm doing. Am I doing what you want? Am I doing what I, what you want?" And you can. If you get really super good timing with this, very con stop. consistently, um, it'll just be like, it'll be really a nice. Okay, come here, because you keep sniffing the thing. Right here. See there. Or there. Away from the camera. It's freaking me out. This thing falls over us. So, when you get really good at the, at the responding to the, hey, uh, is it cool if you, and then you reassure them, you say, yeah, you did great, good job, thank you. You know, let them sort of breathe a little, or lick and chew, as some people call it. Ah, oh, there goes Lena, look, she's gonna, Lena, well, she left, stop. Uh, then that, that cycle gets stronger and faster and better over time. Then, then when you really, really, really need it, like when they're really freaking out, you'll have some kind of tool available that says, just hang out with me. You're okay. And they will. It's, it's a really cool thing. It's a really, really neat. Anyways, I know I kind of rambled on and on about this one. I don't know where Lena went. Oh, she's right there. There you go, just the horses. <clears throat> Are you going to be okay? Stop playing with the tripod. No. Nope. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. I hope, uh, I think I've got most of my thoughts out. Mm. Concepts about training. Reassure them, make them feel really good. It, it goes miles and miles. And uh, one of the um, one of the uh, sayings that I heard a long time ago from Buck Brenham, and I know I say it a lot. There's a few good things that are really stop. Okay, back up, back up. Thank you. Good. Um, but he said, uh, you know, when you get the horses to wear. Where are you going? This side or that side? When you get the horses to where they're really comfortable and they're really sort of happy and, and they feel reassured and safe with you, it doesn't occur to them to bite, kick, or or sort of buck you off or, or try to get rid of you. They're usually trying to draw. Um, and I think that's probably where a lot of positive reinforcement people find that they're making great successes. Uh, so it's an interesting thing. So concepts and ideas, you know, I try not to you know, say one thing or another about particular things unless it's mean, unless it's not kind. I don't know which side to go to. Which side are you going on? So, okay. All right, I'm going to, uh, oh man, I got to get, um,
Where you? Uh, you know, it's just a tripod. Okay, so I'll check some. I'll check some messages here. But you're making me nervous because I think you're gonna mess with things. You things back up. Thank you. Okay, come in for a hug. I had um, I had one commenter say something like, "You should never touch a horse's face. They hate it." Huh. I don't know about that. I know Lena's coming, don't worry. Lena's shuffling around. She always gets so nervous when Lena does that. Yeah, touch your face, horse's face as, uh, as much as you can almost. You know, not, not, don't be excessive about it, but they don't mind. Okay, let's see. Uh, Molly says, I love your horses. Thanks, Molly. Me too. Good grief. Going this way. She just keeps coming to the tripod. <sighs> Next. Thank you, Molly. Uh, Teresa, I would never know it never snows here. It never snows there. Oh, we only just got this snow last night. Going the other way again. God. Stay. Uh, moving on. Emily says, I love you so... I hope you mean the horses, but I very appreciate that, Emily. Thank you very kindly. How are your horses? They are, horses are great. Everybody's doing just fine, playing around, goofing off. Um. <laughs> hey, did I freak you out? But she isn't leaving. It's not leaving. Are you? Hey. She used to be so nervous. She couldn't get anywhere near her head. So we're making progress. Um, mine always, Teresa says, mine always gives his left eye. It is very, very common to only get the left eye. I could be on greasy like this, you know, and she'll be pretty calm on her left side. But on her right side, she gets a little more worried. So we work a lot on her right side. That's just, that's just nature. Yes, Lena wanted butt scratches. Uh, Daniel? 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 I have a horse better than you? Oh, I know you don't. Lulu says she needs a beep beep thing when she backs up. It's true. Margaret says, I think Lena is your boss. She is. Yep, yep, she's my boss. She's the boss of everybody here. She's the house pet, says Lara. Yeah, she's... We can always hope that, you know, they'll sort of be just nice little pets. You know, they'll they'll come hang out with us. They'll want to be around and they'll draw towards us and we can hug and snuggle and pet them and ask them to stay close and, and all kinds of things like that. And they will. And that would be really nice. Rather than having them afraid and fearful, which is what I was kind of meaning, no matter what you do... Where are you going? No matter what you do, as long as you can come back to them and say, thanks for staying with me. I really, I really appreciated that. And just make them feel safe. It only builds, it only goes up. Uh, hi from Montreal. Hello from Vancouver. Well, Maple Ridge, which is close to Vancouver. Not quite. Um, stop, God, you know, Oh, you're in trouble. Back up. To there. Stay. Vagrant. Move it or lose it. Coming through. Okay, moving on. Thank you, Teresa. God, you're always so generous. Um... Uh, Lee's message was retract... Moving. Margaret says, I think I get so much draw because I spend so much time with them. It's true. Um, you become, in my opinion, you become one of the herd. One of the, or you become the herd and they join your herd kind of thing. It depends on how you act around them. And so that's just another concept that's sort of the same thing or you can apply that or not. But if they feel safe and comfortable with you, it is the best 
Ruling through fear is the worst. You're just going to get nothing but poor results. In my opinion. My experience. The things that I see and the feelings that I get from these creatures. So, maybe that helps. Maybe it doesn't. Yeah, so you will. You'll get a lot of draw. Um, and that's... I think that's really powerful. I think it's really cool. You, you're going to make so much progress for so many things. Uh, Lee says, keep the... I mean, it has something in her eye, but it's just a patch of white. It probably is. Um, yes. Gracie is five years old. Um, and a total pain in the butt. Yawning. Uh, yeah, she's almost five. She's um, born a bit. What are you doing? Yawning. Okay, that's it. You're in trouble. Uh, I think I showed it in a video before that when you sort of back into your horse, they should just yield away and get out of your space. It's uh. <laughs> shake her head and stuff. Gracie should have her own channel. Should I just get you your own channel and you don't have to hog mine? Punk. Okay, moving on. Next question, if there is one. Uh, Kay says, hey, do they need blankets? <laughs> I can't even count. If I had a dollar for every time I had this question. Uh, Kay, it's a good question though. Everybody's... Uh, um, entitled to ask questions they're wondering about so don't feel shy just because I sort of snicker a little I just think I get some questions an awful lot do they need blankets no these are the furriest fur balls ever and uh, you know they're just fuzzy wuzzies very warm warm to the touch um, horses that are unhealthy some horses that don't get enough food some horses that are all wet some horses that, uh, you know, it's a health thing. Uh, most horses don't need blankets. There's very good science behind it. I'd get into it, but I think I've done that a few times. I can see if I can um, try to link a video later. It's hard to do when I'm on my phone. So um, most science says that horses, most horses uh, have no need for a blanket and top. And in fact, in many cases, it can actually inhibit their ability to keep themselves warm and protect themselves if, say for example, uh, the blanket were to get soaking wet and stay cold and freeze or whatever. Um, in many cases, they're fine, but then there's the other side of it where you might have cold days and then, or cold nights, and then during the day it gets really warm and you leave it on and then they get all sweaty and so, you know. YouTube crashed again. Sorry about that. Thanks YouTube for making a buggy app. So I bet some of you left, but um, uh, anyway, so as I was saying, uh, I don't even remember what I was saying since YouTube crashed. Thanks a lot YouTube for wrecking my stream. Um, I think I was answering. I'm getting the butt again, everybody. Scratchy scratch. Oh yeah, blankets, right. Okay, so uh, I guess to cover just a little bit, just a tad more, just to give you an idea. Um, you'll know when your horse is cold. <laughs> Fine, I'll scratch you. That's all you get. That's it, Lena. You're all done. Okay, moving on. Uh, oh yeah, so blank. Um, you'll know your horse is cold. One, they'll be shivering. Um, if they're just kind of cold, you'll know it because you'll go to touch them under their mane, uh, under their uh, their legs kind of thing, or in their stifle area, and they won't be warm. You'd be kind of like, ooh, you're not very warm. Um, 
you'll know that they probably need more food. Uh, food is what keeps them really warm. And uh, shivering is the worst. You don't want to see them shivering. If they're shivering, they're pretty darn cold. Um, you'll want to figure out why. Could be a few reasons. Um, I think it's starting to snow again. Ugh, God. Anyway, so yeah, yeah. A lot of times they they don't need it though. Um, so let's see. Do they need blankets? Hi from snowy Seattle. Hi Bonnie. See so you're back. Good to have you back. Thanks for your generosity. In case you didn't hear it earlier. Incredibly too kind, honestly. Uh, Amanda says, thank you for your advice on the food aggression. It's just two days we made some huge progress. Oh, that's a, you're very welcome. Um, in case anybody's wondering and they didn't see the question, there's about a kajillion comments getting pretty pretty busy with the comments. Um, uh, food aggression comments or questions come up quite a bit. Um, I'm going to do a really, I have an idea for a video that I think I can show uh, some basics of that. Uh, um, Mostly though, uh, food aggression, uh, I wouldn't want to call it food aggression. I'd call it uh, the horse can move your feet and is going to show you it's going to move your feet. So usually it has nothing to do with a... I just felt something on my back. I thought you, I thought you left. You're back again? It's Gracie this time. Let's switch horses. Um, a lot of times it, has, it doesn't actually have anything to do with the food. The food is just a strong draw that overrides the drive you had with no food. So, ah, it's just tickling my leg. Moving on. Um, so the the idea is uh, that that you, if you're having trouble with a horse that wants to be around food more than you want it to not be around the food. You've got a horse that's thinking it can move your feet. Hey, you're gonna get it. Tickles, you know. Tickles. Make it. Stop it. Okay, moving on. Yeah, so you're very welcome, Amanda. Uh, I'm glad you're making huge progress. It doesn't take much. Uh, I always try to tell people when you're working with horses, it just takes a little sometimes to just have a change. Both good and bad, so sometimes you have to be careful. But you can always change it to good. I don't want everybody ever to think, uh, you know, that just because you mess something up doesn't mean you can't fix it. Ah, uh, you're welcome for answering the blanket question, Mary. Uh, it comes up a lot, you know, and common, common question. Normal, because you see so many horses with blankets, and a lot of people are, you know, they promote the idea of blankets, and that's that's fine like i always say teach his own you know do what works for you works for your horse you have that right it's your horse did you need a hug is that why you're here or did you just want to be beside me she's so soft if you guys could reach through your screen and touch her she's just so soft Okay, moving on. You know, I don't know if I'll ever get another Arabian again, but man, she's she's pretty cool. Okay, uh, we had horses in Belgium. No blanket unless... Oh, stupid chat. Come back. Uh, it was minus 12 or below. Interesting idea. Um, there's different levels of cold. You could have the weather at minus 12, minus 20, minus 30, but it could be very, very dry. And in such a case, it doesn't feel as cold. But when it gets wet and it's maybe one degree, it can feel really cold. Horses feel that too, I think. So uh, a lot of times my horse will flinch. I'm going to hit, which I've never done. Pretty sure the owner before had. How can I fix this? Oh, that's easy, Teresa. Check this out. Come here. Come here, you. I got to show everybody. Come here. Come here. Good. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah. Good girl. Yeah. A hundred million times. Not that many, but you know what I mean? Like, 
if you've got a horse that gets kind of worried because you, you're moving around and you're shaking, and, you know, there, she's kind of worried. Oh, she's shaking her head. But see, I've never hit her either. I don't know if anybody else has. But in time, if, if you're the draw, if you're the place that says, being with me is safe, who cares if I'm doing this? Maybe I'm trying to fly, swat a fly. I mean, how many times in the summertime you've been like this? Oh, mosquitoes and flies, and, and then your horse freaks out. Well, I don't have anything to say to you. Stop moving. So, um, the concept I always say, everybody, probably say it too often. Just reassure them. Let them know that it's not them. You're not, they're not in trouble. There's nothing wrong. It's safe to be around. I'm going to go get her. Hang on a second. This way. Come on. Can you move your feet? Come on. Go. Go. Well, move your feet then. Good. There's a step. Go. Good. There. Good girl. So I had to move her feet, so poke her in the side, no different than one day I'll ride her, my legs are going to come but it might bother her, but always come back to them, always come back and let them know they're okay. That's, your, that's my best piece of advice for you Teresa, in time, uh, doing this, shaking around, it's easier to do with a halter because she wave, I can kind of keep her with me. Um, I did something with macaroni a while back with that. I think I'll try to, maybe I'll just redo it. God, I can't find any of the links. I've got over 400 videos now. It's ridiculous. So, uh, you know, even if you've never hit your horse, you've never done anything weird, and they act like that, they could have just, that's just mother nature. It's like, don't hurt me. So, they don't understand. Kathy, what, you have no picture? Well, I hope it's back now. Would a stallion react the same way a mare does in such situations? Hmm. I have experience with a few stallions. I don't think it matters stallion or mare. Or gelding. I think some stallions are placed in situations where they're going to be a lot more defensive and I think there's a lot of situations where a lot of mares are defensive or geldings are defensive I think it's going to depend less on their gender and uh, whether or not they've been fixed than it would you know, then it would more on their environment and the people around them. Not to say that if you were looking at the lead horse, whether they might act different. But, um, for example, Vinny's the lead horse here, but I don't have any problems asking him to do certain things or hang out with me. So, no, I'd be very cautious about saying whether or not uh, a different gender or type of horse will do particular things. Uh, I think a horse is a horse is a horse and you always have the opportunity to worry them and reassure them. Can I borrow your head? Get down on it. And let them know that everything is okay. Safe place to be. Nothing to worry about here. Sort of thing. So I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think it may, it's a good question. I, I get it a lot, you know, all my, ah, uh, actually a great one. I had it today, you know, whether or not particular horses, mares or geldings are more scared of men or women. Um, 
the horse today was supposedly was pretty nervous around guys I didn't I didn't have a problem just lucky I don't know I'm not gonna say but I'm they're always very very cautious to anybody that says well I have a mare so it, I have a gelding so it does this you're a guy so my horse is gonna do this you're a girl so my horse is gonna do this um, there is that a little bit I'm not ignorant to the idea that gender makes a difference um, but I would be very cautious to uh, either label or find bias through gender so uh, there is of course just natural selection and natural order of things that when horses are uh, you know when it's a stallion it's going to be more likely to want to procreate and uh, of course when a mare is in heat she's going to be a little bit more edgy uh, I mean there's just nature just natural physiological stuff that you have to take into account so um, anyways so hopefully that uh, hopefully that makes sense um, anyways uh, if it doesn't let me know I mean whatever I can answer I suppose <laughs> uh hello from sydney hey man i love that place i uh i've been to sydney twice i uh i did both diving and snorkeling of the great barrier reef probably like a lot of tourists do but i loved it i took terrible video but i loved it um great place kind of expensive beautiful though your kids are here cool oh hey you from sydney your kids are there oh neat see it's a small community. Everybody's kind of... Gracie's leaving because Lena's coming. You can beep, beep, beep. I got to scratch some more. So, okay. Uh, I have a question waiting for the last student to ask. When riding a horse, where the hands should be, uh, is that with trotting and canter? Where should your hands be? Okay, hang on. Sorry. Hello from Norway. Hi. Oh, I didn't know you were from Norway. I've never been there. I've always wanted to go. Um, I've never been there. I've been around all kinds of places. Um, there it is. Kingston, Canada. Kingston. Kingston's in Ontario. I think terrible geography in some cases. Um, okay, uh, where should your hands be when you're riding? This is a really touchy question because we have to take into consideration um, culture of how you ride, how you want to ride, English, Western, Endurance. If you're asking me how I might ride, trotting or cantering, or walking, um, I, I mostly ride with a loose rein. Um, my hands are low. My center of gravity is trying to be as balanced as possible. So, if we look at it scientifically, um, it's not complicated, but I try to lead through the, the thought process of how I think so that it's not confusing. You can make your own decisions based off of just a bunch of ideas. <sighs> so, with that, when you're riding a horse, you're up high. You're up this high, you know, or higher. Your center of gravity with the horse um, uh, is way different than if you're just living, you're just you. Uh, so having our arms up like this, it's easy for us to walk around. It's easiest for us to get around. Arms don't actually weigh that much anyways. But you have to admit that when you're sitting on your tail bones, you know, your your hip, your hips and, and your tailbone and, and, uh, and uh, you know, you're sitting on your butt, there's not a lot of balance space happening. So putting your arms out, if I have my legs wide, I'm not going to go that back or forth. Have my legs wide, it's no problem. If you stand on one foot and you put your arms out, it's going to make a difference. I feel when I ride, it's the same thing. My balance um, is really important. You never know what's going to happen when you're on a horse. So uh, with your hands, some people will ride 
just a second here. Let's see. Some people will ride up here. Some people will ride down here. And when re people get really worried, their arms come all the way up. They're trying to pull their horse back like that. Um, and when you, I feel that when you do that, you really compromise your whole center of gravity. So for me, hands being low, uh, physiologically it works for the horse because you're on their nose a little bit better. If you get up high, you end up sort of dragging their head upwards. Uh, if your hands are low, you're a little bit more ready to be changing that, your position and balance. So I try to keep my hands low. I try to keep my hands loose. I try not to be on my horse, uh, on its face. In fact, all my horses are so sensitive that if somebody rides really tight, they get pretty worried. Um, Luke's the worst for that. He just can't handle it because I've been too soft on his face. I don't, here comes a big truck. They have to climb up a hill just around here. So, anyway, so I try to keep my hands low. Um, and there'll be times when your elbows will kind of come out and stuff, and you'll be trying to. Yeah, you know, I look kind of weird, but you know what I mean. Anyhow, so hands low as best as I can. Um, and that will allow me to uh, also, uh, if I'm having trouble and I got to make a one rein stop, I can't make a one rein stop from up here because I'll just yank their head up. So, you got to. There's geometry involved with controlling a horse's nose. And because their nose should already be low anyways, your hands should be down there too. If their head is high, huh, you'll probably have trouble. I mean, you'll have trouble no matter what. So that would suck. Okay, moving on. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I've got a few more. I love Sydney. Been there twice. Yeah, Sydney's nice. Here it's hot right now. Are you riding all your horses bitless or do you differentiate? Yeah, I don't use bits at all. I, I, my style doesn't dictate I ride with that particular concept. Um, I'm not completely close to it. I just don't have a need for it. And every horse that I've ever ridden, always ridden with the style that I like, they ride better. Um, not to say that there isn't something there. People do talk to me about it. Uh, using a bit can help them engage better, can be better for their posture, can be better for their muscles and body and stuff. I don't know enough about that because I've never gone to look there. My, my more specialty or the things that I concentrate more on is um, safety and, and riding for trails um, sort of thing. So I don't, I don't get into dressage or more the physiology doesn't mean i don't want to but uh man you've only got so much time in the day i tell you okay moving on uh so that's sort of that i keep my hands low when going faster than walking and i also hold on to my handle so i won't pull on the reins if i lose some balance yeah yeah that makes sense um you definitely don't want to pull on the reins when you lose balance uh, if you can help it whatsoever, which is another reason why I try to keep my hands low and loose. Uh, you know, you don't want to fall off, but man, if you can help not doing that, so. Bothers them. Your way makes more sense. I just see people's hands are way high and the reins are tight and the horse's head are back and just very uncomfortable, almost like a horse abuse. Well, you guys ever heard of the five monkeys story? <laughs> The other part of it, I'm not going to get into that. Um, the other part of it is um, people are too long on their reins when their hands get high. It's because coming back down towards the waist, you actually need less rein. So you actually have to choke up on the rein a little, but there has to be a give and take in that. I'd get into a whole riding lesson when I do this. Uh, you're right. It looks terrible. I hate it too. Uh, hopefully people will find better ways to do that. I could have done things slower and learned better, but I'm kind of loving the adrenaline and the speed of a good gal. <laughs> Me too. Uh, once in a while, I love the speed of a good gal, but mostly I like going slow. It's hot. Hot in Sydney. 40 plus. Hmm. No thanks to 40 plus, please. I handle the cold better than the hot. Um, well, yeah, I don't know if you remember where I got the side pull for the horse. Oh, good for you. Yep, side pulls are awesome. 
Uh, seems to work good. Went on a rainy other day. Going trail riding tomorrow with it. That nah, must be nice. Side pulls are really, um, really good. Um, the only thing I caution with side pulls, just like riding with a halter, is you can make a horse, uh, you can actually make a horse a little bit dull with it. Um, I don't know how to explain it other than just to have really super good timing when you go to ask for stuff, like a backup or a turn when you get the nose and stuff. Make sure to release and have it to be super sensitive as you'd like it to be anyways. Uh, whether that advice is worth something, I'm not sure. But sometimes you can kind of hang on the halters and side pulls too much because they don't respond. Um, but that just means that they're starting to tune out. So the release has to be quick. Your timing. Uh, it's happened to me. It's happened to a lot of people. So I don't know. Anyways. Okay. Uh, he didn't quite turn as good as he used to. Yeah. Um no uh you yeah so this is exactly what i mean you'll get into a halter or a side pull or something a lot softer than say a bit or you know uh, something that's much tighter because it'll be a bit loose even a bozel or hackamore kind of thing can start to get them to be a little bit not as tight as you'd hope for and the the trick to that is to get what you want and get out and then get a little more and get out and get a little more until they start to ask well how much do you want not how much do I have to give, but how much do you want is the question they'll ask me. So, I don't know, hopefully that makes sense. I was asking from a control safety point, had discussion that bitless leaves you without control. I hear that a lot. It's a common statement. Halters, bitless. Uh, a lot of people say they don't have brakes on their horse. They can't stop them. I think that um, it's not true uh, and I can prove it so it just it seems like a, a moot point to kind of have a big discussion well you've seen my riding if you look back you can see uh, it's very possible it's just having good timing and you know concentrating on making sure they get good yeah getting less dull I mean there's so much of that it's fine you just keep working at it. it'll be just don't worry about it at all. Uh, he's drawn more towards his friends than the way, than the way out. Yeah, draw can be terrible. You know, you got to have a little more drive and draw. You know, it happens. Uh, so we're going to go trail riding. He's in a quiet patch of forest. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Uh, it can be very hard when, when they want to go somewhere else, whether or not everybody's getting fed now and stuff like that. So it's not a thing about. So good for you, though. I think that's great. Yeah. I mean, let me know how it goes. I'm always interested in hearing stories. So, anyhow, okay, well, I don't think there's any more questions. And I've sort of finished my uh, thought process that I always kind of want to get. I will be scheduling these things. Uh, I have ordered up um, a better extender for the network, so hopefully uh, the video stream will be better. Uh, and I will, because I've got a lot of ideas. And, um, and everybody asks a lot of questions, so you know, there's a lot of things to discuss. And hopefully, we can get more discussion going on. But I'll schedule things so it's not so haphazard about whenever I show up, and yeah, hopefully, people can catch me. So, I appreciate everybody asking questions and stuff. Um, I think that's it for now. I probably should get on with things, it's a little chilly. Just <laughs> I think Lena's actually, uh rubbing on the the hay bags a weirdo anyway uh so that's about it for now unless say, there's any more questions teresa thank you very kindly i shall have a good evening um it's supposed to start snowing but i'm still going to try to get some stuff done maybe i'll kick the horses out and get some horsey video that'd be fun but uh i will talk to you guys again soon i will do another live stream probably gonna try twice a week i think it's kind of neat it's it's interesting to be able to talk to everybody so uh thanks for popping in saying hello um hopefully it's been some useful information and uh i'll see you guys uh i think in maybe thursday maybe thursday all right okay we're gonna leave it for now you're very welcome um everybody have a good day or night or evening or morning